Hello everybody, it's Captain Nabs with you with a new video series that I'm going to be doing featuring the Flight Sim Studios Embraer E-175 aircraft. This is a brand new aircraft that's releasing into uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm here to show you a very professional way of how to operate this. For those of you that may not know, I have about five and a half years of experience operating this aircraft in the real world. So while I may not know absolutely everything about the aircraft, I have had plenty of experience and I have seen plenty of things go right and go wrong with this aircraft. So stick with me in this channel and I'm going to publish a new video every couple of days. I'm going to teach you how to operate this aircraft like the pros do over the course of the next several videos. The Embraer E-175 is a regional jet powered by two GE CF-34 8E5 turbofan engines. It has a minimum crew of two and seats 70 to 90 passengers, with its bigger brother the E-190 seating between 100 and 120 passengers. It has a range of up to 2200 nautical miles at speeds up to Mach decimal 82 or 320 knots and a ceiling of flight level 410. The 175 is a modern airliner featuring fly-by-wire controls, FADEC controlled engines, highly automated systems, and an advanced flight management and automatic flight control system, all designed to minimize pilot workload and improve overall mission management. This is an excellent aircraft for flight simmers because highly automated systems allow you to get up and running very quickly while being very comfortable operating legs anywhere from 40 minutes to 3 hours in length. For this first video in my tutorial series about the Embraer E-175, we're going to go through the internal inspection and power-up process to get electrical power initially established on the aircraft to allow us to begin the setup for departure. I have a checklist based on the actual Embraer SOP that will be linked to in the video description below that we are going to follow while I give you some notes and hints on how this aircraft works. It should be noted that this is an early access aircraft. That means that not all the systems are in their final form yet and that certain aspects will not work as intended just yet. However, I am going to continue to follow the real world procedure and will just simply push past those parts that don't work properly with the hopes that as the aircraft evolves, you'll be able to see all the systems come together properly. One of the first things you'll notice about the Embraer E-175 is the relative simplicity of the panels around the aircraft compared to similar class but older aircraft which generally have more complicated panels. The Embraer E-175 works on the dark aircraft concept. That is that if everything is working the way it should, there will be almost no lights illuminated on any of the panels around the aircraft. An illuminated light generally means a system that is not working as intended for flight. Additionally, you'll notice as you look across the upper panel, especially here, that almost all of the switches are at the 12 o'clock position. Normally in flight, all the switches on the overhead panel will be in the 12 o'clock position, unless there's been a failure or some sort of abnormality with the system that requires the crew to interfere. To get electrical power established on the aircraft, there are two checklists we need to refer to. The first is called the Internal Safety Inspection Checklist, and the second is the Actual Power Up Checklist. The Internal Safety Inspection Checklist checks all the configuration of the aircraft, all the various switches, to ensure that everything is safe for electrical power to be applied to the aircraft. You don't want the gear or flaps to suddenly start moving as soon as electrical power is applied in case there are people working in the vicinity of the aircraft, such as ramp crew. And as I said before, you can download a copy of this checklist from the link shown in the video description. Internal Safety Inspection Airplane Manuals and Documents on Board Check to make sure that all of the required documents as per your company manuals and regulations are on board. Things such as the Quick Reference Handbook, uh, MEL, Aircraft Certificate of Registration, Airworthiness, Insurance Documents, etc. Specific companies will have a very specific list of documents they need to see. Maintenance Status Checked Read the logbook and check to make sure that everything is functioning as, pro as it should and that there are no open snags. If there's anything that is snagged, or anything that is deferred, make sure you, that you review it and you're aware of the limitations of any unserviceable items. Cockpit emergency equipment checked. Check to make sure that all the required items of cockpit emergency equipment are on board the aircraft. This will generally include things like a fire extinguisher, crash axe, oxygen masks, PBE, escape ropes, etc. Electric panel set. The electric panel is here on the left-hand side of the aircraft. Make sure that everything is set correctly. 
the generators, IDGs, should be in the auto position. The GPU button should be out. AC bus ties should be auto. APU gen should always be pushed in. TRUs 1, 2, and TRU essential should all be in the auto position. Batteries 1 and 2 should be off at this point, and the DC bus ties should be auto. Fuel panel. On the fuel panel, the cross feed should be off, and all the pumps, AC pump 1, AC pump 2, and the DC pump should all be in the auto position. Passenger signs panel. Everything on the passenger signs panel should be off. Emergency lights, sterile, no smoking, and fasten belts lights should all be off. Windshield wiper selectors. Again, both should be off. Hydraulic panel. Checked. Again, make sure that everything is where it should be. The, emergency, the engine pump shutoffs should both be guarded. The PTU should be in the auto position. And the electric pump 1, electric pump 2, and electric pump 3B should all be in the auto position. Electric pump 3A should be off. Air conditioning and pneumatics panel. On the air conditioning pneumatics panel, all the switches should normally be pressed in with the lights extinguished. And the cabin, te the cabin temperature selectors should normally start at the 12 o'clock position so they calibrate correctly when power is initially applied. They can then be adjusted after power has been turned on. Passenger oxygen panel. Passenger oxygen masks should be in the auto position and the mass deployed light should be out. ELT armed. On the main panel, the ELT to the right of the landing gear should be in the down, which is armed position. Landing gear lever down. The landing gear lever should also be down at this point. Start stop selectors stop. Both engine start stop selectors should be at the stop position. Speed brake lever closed. Make sure the speed brake lever is retracted all the way. Rat manual deploy stowed. Hiding underneath this panel here is the rat manual deploy switch. You can't close this panel if it, the switch is pulled. So as long as this panel is closed, then the rat manual deploy is stowed. Slat flap lever, check position. Normally when you walk up to the aircraft, the flaps and slats should be at the zero position and the lever should match the position. Circuit breakers, checked. There are a limited number of circuit breakers on the right and left hand side of the aircraft flight deck. Check to make sure they're all in. Jump seat oxygen mask and regulators. You would do an oxygen mask test at this point on the jump seat oxygen mask and make sure the regulator is set to 100%. And landing gear pins and rat safety pins. Just past the jump seat oxygen, you can see three landing gear safety pins and the rat safety pin all sitting here in their holsters. If the aircraft's been towed, oftentimes the ground crew will take the three gear pins and put them into the gear to ensure the towing is conducted safely without risk of the gear collapse without the hydraulic system powered. So make sure that all these pins are back here, all four of the pins are back here before you go flying. And that is the end of the internal safety inspection. Now for the actual power-up checklist where we apply power to the aircraft. Power-up checklist. Caution, ensure the aircraft is not moved before the IESS is initialized. The IESS is the standby attitude indicator and it has its own internal inertial reference sensors. There is no way to reset this once power is applied. It is always powered as long as power is on on the aircraft. So you have to make sure the airplane is not going to move during the alignment process for the IESS. Battery 1 on, battery 2 auto. Battery 1 on, battery 2 auto. Caution, verify that only displays 2 and 3 are available. If more than displays 2 and 3 are available, contact maintenance. So immediately upon power up, the only two displays that should be powered with battery power only are displays 2 and 3. We number the displays from left to right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So displays 2 and 3 should be the only ones that come on when the battery is on. Battery voltage is checked. This is the time to check the battery voltage when you first power up the aircraft because the battery voltages that show up on the electrical page and on the status page will only show the battery voltage when batteries are the sole source of power in the aircraft. If a GPU, APU, or engine are supplying power to charge the batteries, that will be the voltage that displays here. We need to make sure that the voltage is above 22 volts when we start operating the aircraft. 
If the voltage is below 22 volts, there will not be enough charge in the batteries in case of an engine failure, in case of an electrical failure after departure to ensure the flyby wire computers are still operating. So make sure those batteries have 22 volts to make sure they're charged enough to supply 30 minutes of electrical power in case of an emer electrical emergency when you're airborne. ICAST messages checked. Check to make sure that all the ICAST messages are as they should be for this stage of the flight. Right now we have battery two and one discharging, emergency light not armed, yaw damper off, and steer off. Those are all messages we expect to see at this point in time, so we don't need to worry. We can cancel the caution. GPU button, if applicable, pushed in. So if the GPU avail light shows up, that means the GPU is available, we can push that in and energize the aircraft. If we did not have a GPU available, then we would have to wait a couple more steps in the checklist and energize the APU. When you press the GPU button, you'll see that the avail light goes to the in-use light, which means that the GPU is now connected to all the circuits. You'll notice that all the screens have powered them on, all the other systems are powered on, and we have a solid voltage across our batteries. Emergency lights, on then armed. We'll test our emergency lights by turning them on. This should make the emergency light in the flight deck and in the cabin go on. Once we've checked to make sure that all the emergency lights come on with the on switch, we switch emergency light back to armed and it's ready for flight. Fire extinguisher panel test. You'll press and hold the fire extinguisher test button, which doesn't function at this point in time. And what you should hear within about two seconds is you should hear the fire alarm. You should see red lights appear under the forward, aft, cargo, fire extinguishing lights, the APU fire extinguishing light, the red emergency stop uh, light. You should see the fire handles both illuminate. You'll also see red warning lights come up and you'll see a whole series of ICAST messages. Engine one fire, engine two fire, forward cargo fire, aft cargo fire, landing gear fire annunciations, as well as APU fire annunciations. Once you're happy with all the fire enunciations, you can release the test switch and the fire test will stop. Now that we've performed a fire test, we can now start the APU. If we didn't have GPU power available, or if we just simply want to use the APU for power or for air conditioning, we would start it at this point in time. Turn the APU to on for one second. Make sure that the numbers appear here on the MFD. Initially, when you power it on, dashes will appear for about three seconds while up the APU runs its own power on self test. Once the dashes disappear and numbers are actually shown here for the percent and the temperature, you can start the APU by simply pushing to the start position for one second and you'll see the start process begin. Now I have lights on. So at this point we should make sure if they were not already selected on that the nav lights are on and the beacon should be off at this point. Hydraulic panel as required. Because the Embraer E-175 is a fly-by-wire aircraft, the flight control computers must be tested on a regular basis. It is a requirement that both the electrical and hydraulic tests of the flight control systems have been performed in the previous 50 hours before starting a flight. Normally, the electrical test is started every time the aircraft is powered up. So within the first three minutes after the aircraft starts up, the electrical test is completed. If three minutes after startup, there is still a message that says, flight control bit expired on the ICAS, then chances are it is probably the hydraulic system that needs to be tested. To force the test, we can force all the electrical pumps on for the hydraulic system. So for hydraulic panel checked, what we do if the hydraulic bit is expired is we power on electrical pump one, two, and three A, all to the on position. This will force the flight control to start running their self-check. This takes about 60 seconds, and once the test is complete, the ICAST message that would have been displayed, hydraulic bit expired, will disappear. Once it's complete, you can go ahead and put the one and two pumps back to auto and the 3A pump back to off. Electronic CBs. The Embraer E-175 features electronic circuit breakers that are stored in the avionics bay. These are not directly accessible to the flight crew, but the, the status can be checked and cycled using the MCDUs. Simply press the CB key and you'll see what circuit breakers in the avionics bay 
have been tripped, or if there are none out, you'll see a message to that effect. As we see here, no circuit breakers out and locked. DVD-R control panel checked. At the very top left corner is a DVD-R control panel. Press and hold the DVD-R test button for at least three seconds. If the DVD-R has passed their self-test, what you'll see is no message on the ICAS. If after a three second test they have not passed, you'll see a warning message on the ICAS. Cockpit reinforced door panel check. We are not going to check the access control system for the flight deck for security reasons. And photoluminescent strips checked. Because the emergency egress system uses photoluminescent strips down the aisles to illuminate in case of an emergency, we must ensure that these are fully charged prior to flight. Depending on how long since the aircraft last flew and how bright the inside of the cabin is, we may need to allow 15 to 30 minutes to allow these to charge. Normally, as long as the cabin lights are on prior to loading passengers, this is sufficient. End of power-up checklist. And now we've completed the first step of getting the Embraer up and running. We've checked to make sure all the systems are safely ready to run, and we have added electrical power to the aircraft using both the GPU and APU in this case. For the next video, we'll talk about how to set up the flight deck for departure, including checking all the systems panels and setting up the MCDU. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in episode two.